So there it is. This is my new engine purchase. I know I said I don't really do much in the summer, but uh, I saw one of these come up for a good price. And you're probably asking yourself, well, what's a primarily Penzi guy doing with a uh, giant Santa Fe Texas type? And well, a lot of you Penzi guys will know why I have this engine. And uh, the reason is um, these were kind of rented off the of Santa Fe at the end of the steam era around the summer of 56, central Ohio. Um, Pennsylvania was experiencing a little bit of a coal rush and got these into service to, uh, to uh, help out. I guess the story goes that it was cheaper to rent these as opposed to uh, getting some of their steam back online for the rush that they probably didn't think was gonna last forever. So here you have it. Um, I think this was built around 2001, I would say. I know MTH came out with their version in die cast, and uh, I've seen those around. I never really liked them a whole lot because the boiler uh, underneath the uh, underneath the uh, running board just, it's cut away pretty pretty well, and uh, it's got a big exposed gearbox. But um, for this era in third rails production, this is a pretty nice piece, you know. And uh, I got this. It's all pretty much uh, intact, everything works. Like I said, it's got Lionel Rail Sounds, TMCC. Uh, it doesn't have cruise control, and it's got kind of primitive, primitive running characteristics. It's only got two pickup rollers, and I don't know if you saw in my M M1B video, the adventures I had with those vintage pickup rollers, I decided to jump them out for better reliability. Well, this seems to be suffering the same ailment. So, you know, I'll, I'll go through this whole engine, you know, and uh, inspect it and uh, make a list of all the changes I'm going to uh, do to it. But uh, it's going to be pretty heavily weathered, you know. These things were at the end of their service life out west, and they were brought in as kind of rented mules, you know, and probably beaten relentlessly by the Penzi. And uh, all the photos I've seen, there's a ton of, like, I don't know, chalky uh, water deposit all around the turret, underneath the whistle, so it's gonna be kind of fun to do this one up. Um, and I'll, I'll probably be installing uh, electric railroad crews. I do have some options. Uh, I'm gonna go through my electronics collection and see what I got um, for, uh, for different boards, because I, I do have a Cruise M module and I have a whole Cruise Commander set up, but, uh, We'll, we'll go through it. I'll show you the uh, vintage um, Lionel electronics that are in here. They're pretty interesting. Yeah, if you've never seen it, laid off six video um, on this is, is really good. I'll put a link to his uh, video in the description. He went through one of these and, and put uh, electric railroad crews and electric railroad um, sounds. He did a nice job. He also put a smoke unit in his, which I'm not going to do. As you know, I'm not a big fan of smoke. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep the original four-wire tether. And uh, um, so when we get into the workshop, I'll show you all that stuff. But the other problem this engine has is I can't even really get it around my layout. Now, I have 099 and 090 curves. And this thing will not come out of my 099 curves without dropping those blind drivers. And I'm going to demo that in a minute. Hopefully, I can do it without blowing this engine up. But... Uh, I'll show you uh, the issue. There is a fix for it. It's, it's a well-known issue with these long wheelbase 10 coupled uh, Texas types, but um, we'll uh, demo that here in a minute. Okay, so let me see if I can show you what's going on with this engine and these curves. And for some reason, I was not expecting any issues on these uh, relatively larger 99 inch diameter curves, but uh, I'll show you here. As we try to come forward, you can see I don't have the smoothest control of this engine. It's got a nice gear ratio, I suspect, but it's got pretty primitive motor control right now. You can see, see if it does it. You can see that center blind driver dipping right in the rail. Oh, now it made it. It made it. Oh, you hear all that weirdness? Oh, now it got itself out. All right, let's try it again. You can see here how far 
inward that uh, center blind driver goes. And what's going on is that it goes in behind that rail and it drops. And as it exits the curve, it tries to climb back out of the rail and it can uh, kind of set the engine sideways and then it just pushes the front flange drivers right out. So I'll see if I can replicate that a bit better. Um, it seemed to do it a lot when I was actually pulling the train, so uh, maybe that's that's what really uh, spurs it on. So let's try it again. All right, one more time. We're pulling some freight now, so let's see if I can get this thing crossed up properly. Sorry about that. Nope. But you can hear those drivers pop right back on. All right, so we did it all the way back here. So, of course, this is the uh, hardest curve to film on, so uh, see if I can replicate this. We'll get it back on track here. And then track one, aux one zero, boost. Reset my uh, legacy power master there. Let's see if I can get this engine to show you. Well, that's the wrong one. stop <laughs> there she goes that's the problem so that'll be the first order of business is to get this engine to do a trip around the layout without doing that so we shall meet in the workshop so I'll save the uh, workshop video for the next installments um, right now I, as you can see the uh, skeletal 5011 class is successfully clearing this curve. And uh, in the next vid, I'll show you guys um, what I did to get this uh, to this point. It, it was pretty interesting. So anyway, hope you're having a good summer and uh, hope to be back uh, talking about this engine soon. Take care. Bye-bye.